Who's ever worked on a committee that if you have 13 people sitting around a room trying to make a decision, the odds are very high it's going to go to the lowest common denominator. Yesterday, under questioning, the Minister of Finance said, and I quote, the Commission is confident that the workings of the Commission are in order. Well, what else are they going to say? Well, welcome. I'd like to demonstrate how 13 Canadian Securities Commissions actually help those plunder your pensions, rob your RSPs, and erase half of Canadians' retirement investments with some of the tricks of the trade. I'm going to show you a few of those tricks and how they're played upon investors with the help of government agents. If you do not believe that this is possible in a really good country like Canada, I think you should probably stop watching this video now, go dig out your investment statements for about the last 10 years, and see what kind of returns you've gotten. Let's begin our journey with this 2011 annual report from the Alberta Securities Commission, which you can find for yourself on the web. Let's start at page 1, and it says the Alberta Securities Commission is the regulatory authority in Alberta responsible for protecting investors and ensuring that those who operate in this market comply with Alberta securities laws. And then just a few pages later, they say something which seems to contradict that mandate. They say they helped raise $11.6 billion by letting companies gain exemption from the Securities Act, which is the law in Alberta. They offer permission slips to financial companies enabling them to skirt the protective securities laws, the laws that protect your money from tricksters and con men. To clearly see the contradiction, the serving of two masters, look back to page one, where they say that everyone must comply with Alberta securities laws. That's everyone except for certain people or companies who come to the Securities Commission. Now why would they let people exempt themselves from our laws if they're a government, quasi-government agency? Well, we have to follow the money to see how that actually works and where it goes. I'll start with the uh, analogy. What if, what if you could buy permission to violate the Criminal Code of Canada and make money from it? How much money could you make if you could get a free pass to rob banks with impunity? Yet banks in Canada and, and American banks, even Barclays in England, can gain exemption to the law here in my province of Alberta to rob customers of their rightful returns. Securities commissions have granted permission to skirt the law in Canada more than 5,000 times that I can see. Some of them are harmless, of course, but combined together they cost us a billion dollars every week, in my opinion, without an explanation to the public on any single one, to my knowledge. Yet they have a tremendous effect on your money, your investment, your government money, and uh, potential losses for the public of all of the above. Losses to the sharpest operators in the world. This man, head of Lehman Brothers, Dick Fold, with the help provided to these sharp operators, the average Canadian easily retires with about half as much money as they rightfully should have. And the other half is in the hands of somebody like this, who received permission to violate you and to violate your law. I call it getting richer by cheating. Some people call it criminal. This man was chairman of the Lehman Brothers. He blew up and bankrupted his 100-year-old investment bank just so he could earn an $18 million bonus one year. And those are the kind of folks who have an open-door policy, open-door access, to breach Alberta securities laws. But he's not the only one. There are hundreds of others like him given permission to violate laws while operating here in Alberta. I call it systemic money laundering, using the power of the system to move money from the rightful owners over to investment bankers. Folks like JP Morgan, Citibank, Bank of America, Concrete Equities, any mutual fund or bank in Canada, anyone can line up and have access, pay money to, and receive permission to violate securities laws. Alberta, Ontario, any province you wish. Exemptions to the Act are allowed by each province with this single line saying, if the Commission is satisfied, and there should be a comma here, and a large, large pause, that it would not be prejudicial to the public interest, 
The commission may then exempt a person or a company. The problem I see with that is that securities commissions are staffed with lawyers, mostly lawyers, and what lawyers seem to do best is to find the loophole and then duck through it. So if you read only the first part of that law that says, if the commission is satisfied, then you can almost ignore the rest because the only requirement is that the commission is satisfied. It does not have to be true. In other words, the truth is that it would not be prejudicial to the public interest. That's what the intent of this law is. But if I read it this way, by focusing on the word satisfied part and ignoring the public interest harm or whatever the requirement is, then I find I can almost see what I think the lawyers at the Securities Commission see. I think I see a loophole of whether or not they're satisfied instead of whether or not it's harmful. I could be wrong, but uh, I don't know. A track record of many billions of dollars supports a rather twisted view. So forgive me for that. So they get away with giving 100 passes to skirt the law to uh, U.S. investment banks, J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, Canadian banks, TD, and all the others, British banks, Barclays, um, Ponzi schemes, Crocus investments, income funds, liquor stores, income fund, something called Shining Bank Energy, Baytex Energy, Oil Sands Split Trust, and the list goes on to in excess of about 5,000 names from my research. Here's the legal magic that allows that. Each exemption usually has this statement on it. Each of the decision makers is satisfied that the test contained in the legislation, haven't seen that test, that provides the decision maker with the jurisdiction to make the decision has been met. Satisfied? I don't believe there is a test in the legislation except a test that asks if the Commission is satisfied. I haven't seen one. I've asked every Securities Commission what public interest is served and uh, none have been able to provide any documentation process due diligence. The Alberta Auditor General pointed out in this report how $1 billion was uh, laundered, you call it robbed, cheated, taken, I don't know, lost from Alberta taxpayers through the Alberta Treasury branch. They got uh, legal, investment bankers got legal exemption to sell toxic products and they sold them to the Treasury branch. Ironically, the same people who uh, got the exemptions to the law or granted the exemptions at the Securities Commission are under the supervision of Alberta Finance Department and the Alberta Treasury branch is also under supervision of Alberta Finance and so the left hand of the Alberta government was picking the pocket of the right hand of the Alberta government but uh, never mind it's all your money and it's not theirs. I had a video in here that looked at some of the uh, legislature, the Alberta legislature commenting and questioning the Alberta Securities Commission complicity, cronyism, corruption, allegations of all kinds of bad behaviors and it uh, didn't, didn't play very well once this went on YouTube. So I'm going to just direct you to go to Breach of Trust on YouTube or Larry Alford on YouTube and look at Chapter 3 and, and get a, um, I'm going to say get the benefit of 30 years of my experience as to what the investment industry acts like and what the Securities Commission does or doesn't do for the public. This man's the head of the Alberta Securities Commission and is paid slightly over $700,000 to do what the richest man in Canada, one of the richest men, perhaps the wisest investor called the square root of nothing. The billionaire who said that was Stephen Yaroslawski and he's the founder of investment firm Yaroslawski Fraser, legendary guy. Uh, I, I say he understated it just slightly in that securities commissions do far worse than the square root of nothing. If they only did nothing, then their cost to Canada would be just their six-figure salaries and we could ignore them as simple bureaucrats but in fact they act as handmaidens offering up the power of the state and the law to the brightest and most aggressive criminal minds in the world investment bankers and others and thus they end up doing harm to tens of millions of people by misusing the power and authority of the state 
They help investment bankers and, and mutual fund manufacturers and schemers and dealers. They help them to steal the returns, the money and the hopes and dreams of an entire nation a dollar at a time. For a salary of up to $700,000, they act pretty darn compliant. Here's 167 exemptions found on the Alberta Securities Commissions to Bank of America, a legendary bank for selling out the public interest and lining their pockets. So yes, the, these exemptions probably meet the test of whether or not the commission is satisfied because the fees paid on these 167 exemptions would be in the thousands and that's how the commission gets paid, not by you the taxpayer even though they're a crown agent. I, I just don't, I'm not convinced it necessarily meets the test of whether it's harmful to the public or not and I haven't seen a Securities Commission in Canada yet that could show that. Can you, can you see the difference? I've written to various Securities Commissions, received no answer as to a professional process, uh, demonstrate the test they apply, what due diligence they use, or if there is any discipline and the Alberta Securities Commission in particular is becoming very legendary for its lack of due diligence and transparency. People have been calling for more than 10 years now for a public inquiry into that agency. It seems that we have invented the perfect system to launder money from the public into the hands of our most aggressive pursuers of money on the planet. It's helped by lawyers at the Commission who can't seem to remember whether they're supposed to approve legal tricks that have potential to harm the public, whether they should demonstrate a professional level of uh, due diligence, or is it simply enough to say, we are satisfied, we are the Securities Commission, we are above the law, and that is the end of the conversation. I feel it's the latter. I apologize for the images from the American side of the border on this slide, but if our regulators act out their part in a winner steal all world, then seriously, how far away are these images from coming to Canada someday? Here's a look at uh, how easy it was to shave $2 billion from the inside of the Public Service Pension Plan of Canada into the hands of those folks who no longer have to follow our laws. Public Service Pension Plan invests the pension money for judges and the RCMP, among a few others. And the irony here is that judges have given immunity from civil prosecution to the very people who laundered the $2 billion from their very pension plan. They will never likely even know that they've been robbed in this manner. It's been done cleverly, in secret, and uh, it, it resembles fraud at the uh, simplest levels. If we zoom out to the bigger picture, the RCMP says that $35 billion was the amount taken in Canada, the largest crime in our nation's history, with uh, toxic subprime investments, which would just be one fraction of all the bad investments and all the exemptions that we're referring to here. And the only thing preventing these particular investments and the others from being sold in Canada was our laws, our Securities Acts. And yet, who needs guns to break the law when some robbers have the help of 13 securities commissions who will simply write you a permission slip to skirt any law that you wish. When an Ontario Legislative Committee was established to look into this, they found some results. They found that securities commissions failed to protect small investors, failed to oversee or supervise credit rating agencies, failed in allowing banks to sell toxic investments that didn't meet our laws, failed to police securities dealers who misrepresent those toxic investments and misrepresent unlicensed salespersons as advisors. They simply removed public protections as set out in the law because they were asked to and because they were paid to. So now we've damaged Canadians, pensioners, seniors, judges, police, essentially every single Canadian when you see the total effects of over 5,000 exemptions to our law and most Canadians do not even know how or why that we've lost money, that they've lost jobs, that we've lost some of our economy, that they've lost 
some of their hope. Don't even know where to start laying the blame, and yet the blame lies here. The blame lies with government agents who are peddling away protections for a few dollars or some loyalty or some connections. Along with a few politicians who are allowing the power and authority of the government to give these commissions their clout and let them do their jobs this way. With securities commissions doing this without a transparent process and without notice to Canadians, to investors, you can be defrauded of your money or your returns on your investment dollars without even knowing. It's like the happy face on the left. That's the face of fraud, ignorant of his own loss, unaware. The face on the right is the guy who's been stolen something from, where the victim knows he's lost something and he's sad. Securities commissions do their work behind closed doors, out of the eyes of the public, and Canadians accept them as genuine, as representatives of the state, crown corporations, while they're losing about half their life savings because of what the securities commissions allow. This image shows how exemptions to those who are not licensed, trained, nor paid as investment advisors, it allows them to misrepresent themselves to the public as professional advisors, in quotations, which is a legal license category in the Securities Act. In other words, it lets you, me, or anyone use the title of advisor without having the license of an advisor. If any retail investment client anywhere in Canada can bring me a copy of a government license showing that their investment advisor is licensed and possesses an advisor license, I'll be quite surprised. Imagine how much money you could make if you could call yourself a doctor, a lawyer, or other professional without having to obtain the license or even meet the requirements. Wait a minute, what do you mean meet the requirements? Well, to all the Canadians on the left who are smiling and quite happy with their guy who calls himself an advisor, you know now that he doesn't have to have an advisor license and you can look that up on the Canadian Securities Administrator website and search him out. But did you know that this advisor guy no longer even has to place your interests ahead of his own or those of his bank? Think about that. You've got a guy who's promising you advice pretending to be a professional, leading you to believe that you should trust him, and they have bought, sold, stolen, or changed the rules so that his advice doesn't have to even be in your best interest. You can thank your Provincial Securities Commission for helping with that one. My former financial industry makes billions from this single angle alone. Billions. Hopefully you can begin to see how easy it is for those in the system to rob Canadians, to rob your government, your pension, with zero prosecution, zero accountability, nothing. That's the reason for my doing this video, is accountability. It's an experiment to see if a single systemic player can be held accountable for large-scale financial crime. I haven't seen it in 30 years, but we're going to keep looking. The lowest risk, highest paying work in the country is robbing investors from inside the investment system. No punishment. Whereas robbing can Canadians using guns or other criminal means amounts to about the same amount of money. 50 million, give or take, sorry, 50 billion a year, give or take, when you add up every single crime in the country. So systemic investment fraud does this amount every year in Canada with not a single prosecution at the level of the system players. Another recent example out in Alberta where the Securities Commission report showed that they raised almost $12 billion in the exempt market last year. Number of issuers in the exempt market over the last year that uh, are failing at this moment or at risk of failing is adding up to, it's really close to $1.5 billion in Alberta today after using exemptions to prospectus requirements or the securities laws to basically remove money from the pockets of trusting vulnerable investors. Sure, you can say that the folks who bought some of these investments were being foolish, greedy, misguided, whatever, and you would be entirely missing the point. The point is not that a fool and his money are soon parted. That goes without saying. The point is that the Alberta Securities Commission is acting as a handmaiden to help separate Albertans from their money and help that money to go to some of the smartest, 
richest, greediest men in the world. They're not just doing the square root of nothing. They're being willfully blind or willful handmaidens to move money from your pockets to others. And yes, they are satisfied. Fees from investment companies are used to pay our chairman of our Securities Commission three and a half times more than we pay our premier. Triple, nearly quadruple in pay goes to a civil servant. Satisfied? You bet. Another video that, uh, that I have to direct you over to YouTube and looking at Breach of Trust, Chapter 3, to get the details on and some of the comments in the Alberta Legislature and get some more background. There is uh, a number of videos there on how, on tricks of the trade that relate to this kind of thing. Let's talk about solutions if we can, because they're easy, they're simple. They just have to overcome a few billionaires. The province that wishes to win the race of public protection from money launderers will establish a government paid, not industry sponsored investor advocate agency, a protective agency. I think this might be what the federal conservatives are attempting to talk about, but I suspect it will not contain independence from the industry. It'll have to be industry funded. There's far too much money involved. And uh, you will watch it and you will see the connection. It, uh, this agency should function, ideally, as a protective agent for investor interests only, and not promising to serve, not trying to serve two masters like like the Securities Commissions do. There is no such agent in all of Canada that promises to protect only investors. They all serve two masters. And uh, time has told us that that can't happen. Investment bankers will be fighting and working with your government and lobbying your government. They'll be going tooth and nail to prevent this because the cost to bankers is in the hundreds of billions of dollars. If they cannot continue these misdeeds to the public. If they can't walk in and pay a fee and get exemption to the law, they're going to lose hundreds of billions of dollars. The cost to 13 securities commissions and the reason why they would fight so hard to prevent Ottawa from taking this over is that they lose tens of billions, possibly hundreds of millions in legal fees. Uh, tens of billions, yes. Uh, hundreds of millions, yes in legal fees to friends, associates, colleagues, former partners, uh, all of the, the uh, thousands and thousands of legal people who, who, who feed off of the legal paperwork that the securities commissions do as they're completing their square root of nothing. Uh, I trust that anybody that's watching this will send me uh, enough hate mail and corrections etc that that I can that I can take things that aren't factual and I can I can correct them and make it better. You know, you're going to find reasons to disagree and I, I simply ask you to make an attempt to correct anything that is not factual. I'll change the presentation so that it is accurate and is in the best interest of the public interest if I can. End of uh, arguments just about here. The uh, track record is clear in Canada that the Securities Commissions do not only fail to protect investors from unfair, improper, or fraudulent practices, but it seems that they actually act as handmaiden and they help people to practice unfair, improper, or fraudulent practices against the Canadian public. The record is pretty clear on the billions of dollars, and so it, it seems that Canadian regulators help companies who need to cheat the law to win and they provide this help they seem to provide this help while ignoring the better practices and the interests interests of protecting the public if they help companies cheat the law that very often causes cheating money from the public which costs our economy more money than every other crime in the country combined so securities commissions are allowing this unfair improper or fraudulent acts against the public, not just by accident, not by being inept, not by doing the square root of nothing, but by acting without professional practices, procedures, disciplined due diligence to prevent those things. It's not like they're trying to let the public get ripped off, but they are failing to do anything, to show anything if, by way of a public document that they're preventing the public from being ripped off. 
So go to my YouTube for some further examples. Uh, please, legislators, do something. Legislate these folks out of the business of protecting the public or the pretense of protecting the public. They are lawyers, and I am afraid they know not what they are doing. If you've lost money in an investment that's an exempt market investment or one that has received the benefit of some of these legal tricks from your securities commissions, then you have a bottomless, bottomless supply of uh, money to litigate towards the Alberta government, the Ontario government, whoever has allowed these practices to continue, I think you can make a case for gross negligence, possibly, probably conscious wrongdoing, and you can certainly discuss misfeasance, misfeasance and failure to, um, to act on their duty of care owed to the public. That's uh, something you'll have to talk to a lawyer about, but so that's two things. Litigate these guys out of the pretense of protecting the public, Litigate them, if you have to, to put them out of business. Uh, investigate. More than 10 years has been wasted calling for public inquiry, and the government is, uh, is slow to call public inquiry because that is embarrassing to the government. So, voters, tell your government, MLA and MPP, that you will not support them if they continue to support an agency that's effectively, effectively stealing you blind, robbing you blind taking your rightful rates of return. I hope you'll educate others as well and share this with people who need to see it, hear it, and can act on it to change things for the better. I thank you for listening and I look forward to hearing from some of you.